Flow year eight. Okay, your next topic uh, for this week is ratio. Okay, you have done ratio before in year seven, so hopefully this will be just a quick little whiz through reminder, nice and easy, straightforward for you. Okay, okay, what is ratio then? Um, sharing something out unequal parts. Okay, sharing things unequally, anything like that. Okay, um, it's two numbers. Those are your parts with the sort of the, the double dot in between. Okay, the colon. Right, we'll start with simplifying a ratio then. As you can see here, it says dividing the numbers in a ratio by the HCF, that's the highest common factor, to make the numbers as small as possible without changing the ratio. Okay, so you can you can have ratios which have got quite big numbers, but you can divide them. As long as you divide by the same number for all, all the parts, you can divide them down. You can make the numbers a lot smaller without actually changing the ratio. And it's the thing it's most like is simplifying a fraction, where you do exactly the same thing. You divide the top and the bottom. You get the numbers as small as you can without actually changing the fraction. Okay. So the first couple we'll have a look at. And I'll do the first one with you, and then maybe an idea would be to stop, stop the video, have a go at the others yourself. And like I say, the idea here now then is to find the highest common factor, if you can, of 36 and 48. Now, they divide by lots of things. They both divide by 2, they both divide by 3, they both divide by 4, both divide by 6. You can do it like that, but the quickest thing to do would be to divide both numbers by 12. Okay, so with a fraction, you do the same to the top and the bottom. With a ratio, you do the same to all of the different parts of the ratio. That would give us 36 divided by 12, which is 3, and 48 divided by 12, which is 4. And I know it won't go any smaller than that, because there's nothing that 3 and 4 both divide by. Okay. Now, I could have got them in a different way. I could have said, well, I know they divide by 4, first of all, okay, which would have given me 9 to 12. Because now I can see that 9 and 12 can both go smaller, they're both in the 3 times table, I could divide by 3, and I would get 3 to 4 eventually. Whoops. I should say divide by 3 there. Okay. I'd get 3 to 4 eventually, because dividing by 4 and dividing by 3 is the same as dividing by 12 in the first place. Anyway, okay. So if you pause the video and see if you can simplify the other 4, Okay, find something they all divide by, um, and then I'll talk you through them quite quickly, and we'll see if we got the same right answer. Okay, so pause the video now and have a go. Right, okay, let's go through these quickly then. So the biggest number that these both divide by is 5. There wasn't a lot of choice on this one. Your final answer should be 5 to 8. That can't go any smaller. Okay. Here, there's lots of things they divide by. 2, 3, 4, 6. The biggest is 12, though. They're both in the 12 times table. You should end up with 3 to 1. Even if you did it a different way, as long as you get 3 to 1, you can tick it. It's correct. Okay. Um, down here, something at 60, 32, and 12 divide by. They both divide by 2. You can do it that way. Okay, But you'll need to divide by 2 again if you do it that way. The quickest way is to divide everything by 4. Okay, That'll get you straight to your final answer, which is 15 to 8 to 3. That's the smallest it will go. There's nothing that those three numbers will divide by. They've got no common factors. Okay, And then our last one. Again, I mean, it looks like they should divide by lots of things, but actually they don't. Your only options are 2 and 4 again. So we'll go with 4. Do it quicker then, you see. You end up with 6, 20, 9, okay. 6 and 9 are both in the 3 times table, but 20 is not. 20 and 6 are in the 2 times table, but 9 isn't. So again, that one's been simplified as far as possible. Now, and if we move down then, the only thing that can make this a little bit tricky is if you've got different units to start with. Now, a ratio shouldn't really have units. Okay, there are it's just two numbers, but those numbers must have 
the same units. So you can't have a mix of kilograms and grams. You've got to pick either kilograms or grams and, and work it through with the same units both sides. Okay. Now, if I change 800 grams into kilograms, there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram, so that's going to be 0 0.8. Now, you can't have decimals in a ratio. It's going to be whole numbers. So instead of, instead of changing grams to kilograms, we would be better off changing the kilograms into grams. So 2 kilograms is 2,000 grams. 800 grams, and now they're both in grams. You can just forget about the grams and just look at the numbers. So 2,800, and if you divide that down, I mean you can divide by lots and lots of things, but eventually you would end up with, and you can check it yourselves, 5 to 2, and you don't need to put grams on, ratio doesn't have units, so 5 to 2 is done. No idea what that is, let's get rid of that. Oh dear. Okay, um, let's have a look at the next one, and then you can do a couple yourselves. This time you've got a mix of minutes and seconds. The easiest thing to do is to change this into seconds. 60 seconds in a minute. So that's 180 seconds on this side and 40 seconds on that side. We can get rid of the seconds bit now because they're matching. We don't need the units. And if you divide that down, you should get 9 to 2. Now what I'd like you to do again now is pause the video and have a go at the rest of those. And then we can check answers when you're done. Okay, so pause the video and give them a go. Right, answers. Uh, four days, leave it as days. Two weeks is 14 days. So we've got four days, 14 days. Not a lot you can do there. Two to seven is as small as it goes. And then moving down a little bit. Um, a thousand meters makes a kilometer. So we have 600 that side. 3,000 on the other side. Okay, they actually both divide by 600. You should end up eventually with one to five. Um, changing centimetres into millimetres, we get 85. The only thing they divide by is 5. Okay, you should get 17 and 6. So I've divided by 5 then, a lot of options I'm afraid. And then our last one over here, 8 hours is fine. 24 hours in a day, 324s are 72. They're both in the 8 times table. If you want to do it quickly... 1 to 9. So that's simplifying a ratio. Right, then we move on to sharing in a ratio. And you've again, you've done this before. So this is where you split an amount into parts. All the parts are the same size. They're all worth the same, but not everybody gets the same number of parts. So you end up with an unequal split in the end. Okay, so here's my first example. David and Sarah share £350 in the ratio 5 to 2. Calculate how much each person gets. And the first thing you've got to realise is that 5 to 2 can be drawn. Okay, the box method or the bar method, you sometimes see this called. So David, because David is first in the question, gets five parts. And Sarah only gets two parts. Okay, but that makes seven parts altogether. So the first job, because £350 is all of the money, it isn't always, but in this question, £350 is all of the money, is to split 350 into seven equal parts. 350 divided by seven, you can do bus stop division if you're not sure. That's 50. So that tells me that each of these parts is worth 50. The parts themselves are always equal in value. The difference is that David gets five of them, which is 250, and Sarah only gets two of them, which is 100, and that should add up to 350. It does, so that's correct. Okay. Now then the next example. John and Tom share the cost of a season ticket in the ratio 2 to 3. If the ticket costs £400, how much did each person pay? Okay, so we've got two... With three, this is John, that's Tom. OK, 
okay because it's always the order you read them John came first so John pays the least how many parts have we got this time well two and three is five we've got one two three four five boxes so 400 divided by five is 80 so one part is worth 80 once you know what one part is worth it's easy after that so John paid 160 pounds and Tom paid 240 and then the last one for this style question then a little bit trickier flour sugar and butter should be mixed in a ratio of 5 to 2 to 1 to make a cake if the whole mixture weighs 1.6 kilograms and as we've seen from earlier that's 1600 grams that'll make it a little bit easier calculate how much of each ingredient was used so we've got five that's the flour we've got two which is the sugar and one which is the butter so flour sugar and butter how many parts is that all together well the 1600 grams is eight parts divide it and you get 200 each so 200 200 200 200 200 100. All of these with 200, 1,600 divided by 8. So we end up with 1,000 grams or kilogram flour, 400 grams of sugar, 200 grams of butter. Okay, and that's that one done. So count the parts, divide. If, only if, 1.6 is all of the parts added up. Okay. If we look at the next one, it's not the same. So in this question, Andrew and Sarah split the cost of a meal in the ratio 2 to 3. Andrew paid £28. How much did Sarah pay? The big, big difference this time, and you've got to look out for these, okay, because people don't always notice them. The £28 is not the total cost of the meal. The £28 is just what Andrew paid. There's Andrew, there's Sarah. Andrew paid £28. So it's not 28 divided by 5, even though there are 5 parts. It'll be 28 divided by 2. It's these. These add up to 28. Just Andrew's share, not all of it. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Which means Sarah paid three lots of 14, three lots of 14, 42 pounds. You can even work out that the whole meal then was 70 pounds. If we have a look at another one, three friends shared the cost of an Airbnb in the ratio of two to one to three. The friend who paid the most paid 135 pounds. So two, one, and three and again the 135 pounds isn't all of it 135 pounds is the friend who paid the most so those three make 135 pounds so if i want to work out the value of one part i should do 135 divided by three you can do that with long division best stop method that's 45 45, 45, 45, okay. So this person must have paid £90. This person paid £45. And the other 135 How much was the Airbnb altogether? Add up all of the parts. £270. Okay. Um, alternatively, what we could have done, once we knew that one part was equal to £45, we could have just times by six and that would have got us the 270 pounds but i know a little bit more now because i know what each person paid and then the last one of these then we've got sand and cement being mixed the ratio is five to two so 60 is the five parts work out the two 60 divided by five is 12 12 and 12 makes 24 and that is ratio done.